for coming. I am so excited that uh, we are kicking off the, the final days of the Get Out the Vote period, uh, joined by a really special guest, someone who I've had the opportunity uh, to work with, uh, to, to watch uh, lead so many critical issues uh, for our communities here in Rhode Island and across the country. And I got to start my career really early. Uh, knocking on doors, spending time uh, at events, talking to voters uh, with Congressman Patrick Kennedy. Uh, he represented the 1st Congressional District from 1994 to 2010 and is someone who I think uh, is a model of how I'd want to serve. Focused on jobs and the economy here in the district, focused on public health, especially our mental health uh, in, in the district and in the country, and has shown that he can be committed to, to the, the, the range of causes, but also build the per personal relationships, the proximity with voters uh, and everybody in the first congressional district that we deserve. And so that's why I'm ultimately running. I'm running uh, because as a kid of Pawtucket, uh, uh, I had the opportunity uh, to have people here invest in me, people like Congressman Kennedy. And now uh, I want to use that experience that I gained working for the president, briefing President o Obama, President Biden in the Oval Office working here at the State House to be effective for people here throughout the first congressional district on day one. So it's my great pleasure and honor uh, to introduce my friend, uh, former congressman from the first congressional district, Patrick Kennedy. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, you know, when I first ran, uh, my campaign slogan is, I could do more for Rhode Island. Everybody knew what that meant. They meant that I had a father in the Senate, a cousin also in the House, my family was well known in Washington, D.C., and it went, when it meant to get what I needed for Rhode Island, I had the connections. Gabe Amo can do more for Rhode Island. He knows how to get things done in Washington, and Rhode Island needs that kind of power. We need someone who understands the way Washington works. No one in this race understands that better than Gabe Amo. I want our state to have a chance at having a voice in Washington, D.C. It will have one with Gabe Amo as their congressman. He is a bright spot in Rhode Island. He is someone who's going to make us proud. He has the right values, and he has a work ethic second to none. No one's worked harder in his life all the way along than Gabe Amo. And I really hope this district takes Gabe and moves him on as their congressman, because they won't go wrong with Gabe. I will tell you, his opponents, especially the one that's in the front runner status right now, the notion that he would come out against the largest economic driver in the first district, the defense economy, left me flabbergasted. The notion that you can be a good Democrat and a liberal and not also support a strong national defense and good jobs here at home makes no sense. Gabe is a good Democrat and a strong liberal, but it doesn't mean he's not gonna fight for Rhode Island jobs. And the way you fight for Rhode Island jobs is you don't cancel out Jack Reed, who's chairman of the Appropriations for Defense Spending. That's what Aaron Regenberg would do. He would vote against Rhode Island's best interest in cutting defense spending by 10%. In this state, with nearly a billion dollars coming in from national defense, that would really be a dramatic downturn for our state because it floods the whole economy with jobs. I was on the Armed Services Committee. I went on the Armed Services Committee like my predecessor, Ron Makeley, because we knew how important it was to the state's economy to have a voice. And Gabe Amo will be there to protect Rhode Island jobs, unlike his opponent, who is purely rhetoric-based, purely ideological, does not have the political finesse to really get things done, like we have with Jack Reed, likely we have with Sheldon Whitehouse. And I can tell you, people are going to work with Gabe because they know he can work with them. And, and it's not a partisan, ideological, extremist view of the world. And that view of the world is what's getting our country in trouble today. We need the country to be represented by people who really believe in not having it their way or the highway. And Gabe is a person who can work 
with all of his colleagues, just as he's done in the Biden administration and prior to that in the Obama administration. He understands how to work with mayors because he ran the White House's national efforts with mayors. He's understood how to work with the administration on a number of major important initiatives, including implementation of the Affordable Care Act. And to my mind, that's the kind of experience that when Gabe Amo hits Washington, D.C. as this congressman for our first district, he's not going to miss a beat. He's going to be able to go to work day one and make a difference for this state. Well, happy to take a few questions from everybody. Thank you so much, <laughs> My final pitch to voters is that we deserve in the first congressional district a congressperson who can be effective from day one. Like the congressman said, trust him, he had this job. I can get to work for Rhode Island to invest in our economy, protect Social Security and Medicare, combat gun violence, invest in our communities because climate change is here, and also build the relationships we need to make Rhode Island have an outsized voice in Washington, D.C. So the weekend looks like me being everywhere talking to everybody to reiterate that message and make clear that we have a, a choice in this election between someone who is going to get someone done, someone who is running not to make a point, but someone who's running to make a difference. We've got time for two more before it got to you. Yeah. Congressman Kennedy, first of all, welcome back to Rhode Island. It's good to see you. Uh, maybe, do you have any anecdotes or maybe a couple of projects that you might have worked alongside of uh, Mr. Amo on? Sure. Well, uh, Gabe has been involved in the Democratic Party here for a long time. And when you start going back to the who's who that you've traveled in the same circles with over the time, I remember you worked closely with Bill Lynch. I know you showed up not only for my colleagues, Senator Reid and Senator Whitehouse, but you were there uh, with me. I know that you love politics. And, you know, <laughs> frankly, that shouldn't be a negative. It often is perceived that way. But we need someone who loves working with people. And Gabe wants to roll up his sleeves and get out into the communities and make a difference. This is not about grandstanding. He believes in public service. His life is testament to that. I know his family. His uncle is a good friend of mine. Um, this is how we do things in Rhode Island. We know about loyalty. We know about relationships in the community. And we know about trying to represent this state. And Gabe's got all of those qualities and that's why I think he'll make such a great representative. This is a special election. We need people to turn out and we need them to know that we have a special candidate who can put Rhode Island on the map. Gabe Amo has an impeccable academic career. He is as smart as anybody that you'll ever meet and he'll impress his colleagues in Congress. I know when he's trying to get a bill passed for Rhode Island, my colleagues are going to listen to him because they're going to see what a smart young man he is. And he's the future. And if we're going to have this open seat, we ought to put someone in who's going to be the kind of representative we can all be proud of for, for the future of the state. One more question. When uh, Don Carlson dropped out, there were about 5,000 votes in the cast. Those are basically, you know, nullified now. So do you think that's an indication that ranked choice voting should be on the horizon? As I've said publicly, I, I think ranked choice voting is something we should consider here in Rhode Island. But i got to be honest, I'm focused on Tuesday uh, and getting as many votes uh, for our campaign uh, as possible. And happy to have those conversations about voting systems and, and ultimately making sure that everybody feels like their votes count in this democracy. And they certainly will in this election. So I encourage everybody to get out if you're in the first congressional district because we need your support and we can provide the effective leadership that people need to watch. Let me answer that ranked voting question from another perspective. The idea of ranked voting is that you get the real majority behind a candidate. Right now we have a very divided field. However, I would say a lot of those candidates are all together in terms of the same philosophy versus the front runner who represents a, a minor part of the overall Democratic Party, but he's still front runner because of the rest of the vote is so divided. Um, I would hope that my friends who are also running in this race would see Gabe Amo as the candidate to coalesce behind. Because honestly, Aaron Regenberg 
will not hold a seat that will be able to be defended by the Democratic Party. He is too extreme. This seat was held by a Republican. It may be a blue seat, but when people see him voting against the defense industry in this state, when they see him wanting to upend uh, the private health insurance system, I will tell you, he's invulnerable. He's vulnerable to getting beaten by a Republican. Gabe Amo isn't. Gabe's going to hold this seat for Democrats, and it's why I hope all of my friends who are also running, but who really want to see someone more philosophically aligned with them get elected, they should get behind Gabe here at the end of the race. So you're calling on them, some of them to drop out of the race? I'm not calling on them to drop out of the race. I'm just saying to their, when we all understand what's at stake here, and there's a certain unanimity of opinion. They all know Gabe, they love Gabe, and they're closer to Gabe philosophically than they are the front runner. I would hope that they come together at the end and make Gabe the choice for all of us, uh, rather than have a minority of the Democratic Party dictate who the nominee is gonna be. Thanks everybody.